All right, golfers, in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about hip rotation in the golf swing. But even more specifically than that, I want to talk about this idea that the hips spin out too fast in the downswing for some players. You know, I would argue that this is one of the questions I get asked the most often on social media is how can I slow my hips down because they're spinning out too fast. Now, I will say there are a very small percentage of players where trying to slow the hips down and trying to speed the hands up might actually help you. It'll sequence things a little bit better. The golfer will feel like they're in a little bit better control of the club. Some golfers like to feel things through their hands, through impact, and that's very acceptable. You know, everybody swings the club very differently, so I'm not going to say that's not the best solution. What I will say is that I have found personally that if you understand what is actually taking place, you'll start to realize that there are other alternatives out there than just slowing the hips down in the downswing that might actually be more beneficial for you. And so I want to th talk about this idea of spinning out the hips too fast in the downswing. You know, I even had a player recently in one of my Q&As send me a video and they were trying so hard to slow the hips down. And immediately you can see that, you know, my first scenario comes in and I, I come across this a lot, which is where the golfer's rotation to their hips in the backswing does not match the speed that the hips are rotating in the downswing. What do I mean by that? Well, if I rotate my hips only 15, 20, 25 degrees in my backswing, okay? So let's assume I'm a player who doesn't have an enormous amount of hip turn going back. If my hips get really restricted, what ends up happening is it gets a lot harder for my hands to travel around my body. You know, I've talked about this a lot, which is this idea that if I just kind of lock my arm in place, as my body starts to rotate, my hands are typically going to move in the direction that my body's going. You know, I can certainly manufacture a hand path myself and manipulate it. But assuming that I'm not outright trying to change my hand path through the hands themselves, the more I rotate in my backswing, because my body's rotating this way, because my chest is rotating this way with the hips, my hands and arms are going to follow. So the more I rotate in the backswing, the deeper my arms are going to get. So the flatter, in theory, they will get. Now, if I'm somebody who does not rotate my hips a ton in the backswing, my hands are unlikely to get very deep. It doesn't mean they won't. Some golfers still get there, but it's less likely, right? It's, you're making it harder to get there. And so what I come across a lot is a golfer who does not have a great deal of rotation to the hips in the backswing. So the arms never really get very deep, right? A little more in front of them, a little taller, not so flattened behind them with the arms. And then they have a crazy amount of speed to the hips in the downswing because they really want to turn towards the target, right? It's commonly understood that rotation, for the most part, is a good thing in the downswing as long as it matches the other variables. And so if my hands don't really get very far back because I don't have a great deal of hip turn in the backswing, but now I am really rotating hard in the downswing, well, what's going to happen to the hands in the club? My hands are still going to be influenced by my rotation, right? It's no different in the backswing than in the downswing. So if I rotate a lot in the backswing, my hands get flatter. If I rotate a lot in my downswing, my hands are going to move more out in front of me. Well, if I don't have that hip turn proportionally in the backswing to match how fast my hips are rotating in the downswing, what is going to happen? I am going to have my hands kick really out in front of me as my am rotating my shaft is likely going to stay a lot steeper onto the golf ball. And now my hips are going to be way too open, way too fast. And I'm going to hit way too down and out to in on this golf ball. Now, in that scenario, a golfer might see that and say, well, I'm spinning out my hips way too fast. My hands and club are getting out in front of me. I'm way too over the top of the golf ball. And I hit the ball a lot better if I slow my hips down. Well, in theory, you're not wrong, right? If you don't have a lot of hip turn in the backswing, and you try to keep the hips very quiet in the downswing, that gives your hands more time to maybe drop to the inside with the club, and you can prevent yourself from getting so steep on the ball. So that golfer is not wrong. It's not to say it's not a good decision. It just means that for me personally, it's maybe not the most efficient decision you can make in that scenario. A much better alternative, personally, would be to create a bigger range of motion and a bigger turn to the hips in the backswing. So I'm not trying to get the golfer to rotate slower in the downswing. I'm not trying to prevent the rotation from happening. Instead, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a bigger turn to the backswing, which in theory for most golfers would also influence a deeper arm structure in the backswing, a little flatter. So the hands aren't so in front of them, but as I turn, they get a little deeper and more behind me. 
And now what ends up happening is because that golfer has the bigger turn, because the hands get a little bit deeper and flatter, now even though they rotate their hips very fast in the downswing, they have the space for the hands to move out. The club doesn't get too steep on them. And the rotation actually matches up on one side and on the other, meaning the backswing and the downswing. But if that golfer just has this like restricted hip turn in the backswing and the hands end up here instead of making that bigger turn and getting them deeper and then they spin out really fast in the downswing, it doesn't work. So, yes, the matchup doesn't work what that player is doing, right? It's very clear that the golfer needs to do something to change. The solution, though, is not always to slow the hips down in the downswing. It's not that your hips are necessarily spinning open too fast. It's that your backswing's hip turn doesn't match the speed in which you're rotating in the downswing. So if you start to create a bigger range of motion, a little more extension to the trail leg, a little bit of a bigger turn, you can influence the hands a little deeper, and that'll actually allow you to still use the same amount of speed and hip rotation in the downswing, and all of a sudden the sequence of those two pieces get better, and you end up finding... Uh, the bottom of the swing and your golf ball, obviously a lot better. So there is one scenario where slowing down the hips isn't necessarily the best scenario. Now, second option I see, and I would say that this is maybe more common with LPGA Tour players, especially from my experience, women typically are more flexible, a little more mobile. They can create a lot more rotation, right? So what ends up happening is And again, this is not exclusive to women. I'm just saying that it's more commonly seen in women from my own personal experience where the golfer goes to the top and they might actually have a decent backswing, but now their hips spin out so fast that the upper body cannot keep up. And I would argue that this is something that you see a lot with golfers who say, I'm spinning open too fast. The club gets stuck behind me. Well, what's really happening is it's not that the club and hands are getting stuck too behind you because the hips are too fast. It's that the upper body isn't matching the rotation of the lower body. There's too big of a separation taking place there. And again, we see this a lot with LPGA Tour players, but I also see this with a lot of men as well. So what ends up happening is the golfer might actually, in scenario number two, have a pretty decent backswing, right? They get to the top and their structure is pretty good. But now they spin out the hips so fast that the chest can't keep up, so the chest lags behind. Well, I mentioned how the upper body, right, the chest, is the major contributor to the hand path. It's not the only one, but it's a big influence. Well, if my hips, from this position here in the backswing, if my hips rotate really fast and my chest can't keep up with the speed that my hips are turning, my chest is going to start to lag behind. As soon as the golfer's chest starts to lag behind, if the hips are spinning out, my chest starts to fall back. And as my chest starts to fall back and you can't keep up with the rotation, I get stuck, right? So what ends up happening is golfer has a pretty decent backswing structure. Now the hips spin out really fast, but the chest falls behind. As the chest starts to fall behind, the hands and club drop too much underneath the plane. So this is when the golfer gets dumped underneath, right? Their club path gets too strong from the inside. Well, again, in this scenario, yes, The speed of the hips is very fast, and there's clearly a sequence problem taking place. But in this case, it's not always, again, the best solution to say, well, the hips automatically have to slow down to keep up. Instead, you might actually be able to speed up the rotation of the upper body. So it's one of those things where you don't always have to look at this idea of the hips spinning open and saying immediately, oh, just slow them down and I'm good to go. Fine, that might theoretically help you, but it's not always the best solution. In many cases, I would argue it's not. So in scenario number two, what ends up happening is I go to the top and things look pretty good. If my hips spin open really fast and my chest lags behind, I end up getting caught. My hips are spun open. My chest is caught back. So the club and hands get stuck too far behind me. Well, rather than slowing down the hips, why don't you work on speeding up the chest? If I speed up the chest to match the speed of the lower body, all of a sudden my hand pass starts to move more out once again as my body's rotating better. So the hands and club don't get stuck behind me. If I rotate my chest really fast here, and I'm going to exaggerate this, right? Well, my hands get way more out in front of me, and the club doesn't get stuck so far behind me. So you can theoretically keep the speed of the hips, but you have to speed up the upper body in that scenario. Again, I'm not going to say that this is the only solution, okay? I'm not here to tell golfers that this is the only way you have to do it. This is the only drill. The point of this a uh, whole video lesson here is to give you all a deeper understanding into certain scenarios that create problems. And maybe you start to see that there's more than one solution to help you. So yes, 
In some cases, the golfer's hips spin out too fast. The chest lags behind. Well, if you slow down the hips, it gives everything time to match up. Fine. But if you spin out the chest a little bit sooner, and when I say spin out, I just mean rotate it faster. Well, now your upper body's rotation matches the lower body rotation and you don't get stuck anymore. So in scenario number two, a different alternative there. So I would say those are the two more common patterns. Obviously, I can talk about so many different outlier scenarios, but these are the two that are the most common. When I get asked, well, my hips are spinning out too fast in the downswing, how do I slow them down? Well, in some cases, it might just be a backswing issue where you need to create a bigger turn to match the downswing hip speed. In some cases, it might be that the chest in the downswing is too slow. And if you speed it up to match the speed of the rotation of the hips, you can sync with everything better, sync it all up, and you'll hit some good shots. So I hope this provides a little bit of insight into this uh, misconception here for you all and uh, get grinding.